In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the Squire Classic Vibe 70s Precision Bass. Hey guys, I'm Tyler and you're watching the TJS Bass Channel. Today's video is in collaboration with Landy Guitar Centre. Um, as the t-shirt says, I'm going to leave a link to their socials below, a link to my socials, and if you're new around here and tuning in for the first time, consider hitting that subscribe button. As I said in the little introductory piece, this is going to be everything you need to know about this bass. You're going to hear the bass and I'm going to run you through all the specs and give you my conclusions on who might be interested in this bass and why you might want to buy one of these. I'm just going to start off by saying that this is my favourite Squire that I've reviewed um, for the Guitar Centre here in the UK um, on my channel so far. I do like this bass and I'm going to run you through all the specs and tell you why I like this bass. So we're going to start off with the specs and then go into a bit more detail. Um, this is obviously a precision bass um, and I love the fact that it's a classic vibe. Um, I think the vibe part is really important with the square range because you're not getting a recreation of a vintage style instrument. What you're getting is some of the vintage features and some slightly more modern features coming together um, to make a bass that is both practical for modern use and modern players but has some of the cool aspects of a vintage instrument. The first thing that obviously denotes this as a 70s inspired instrument is the styling. So we have a block inlay um, fretboard, this is a maple fretboard um, and as you can see you've got the blocks on the um, odd frets um, and binding. Um, in addition to that you have the 70s style logo which I've always loved. Um, it's the one thing that I wish my custom shop bases had. Um, is the 70s precision base logo, so I think that looks amazing. Um, and then you've got the normal Squire logo next to that. It's also in a very 70s colour. The colour here is walnut, um, which is just kind of a, a browny colour, but it's, it's better than just a brown. Outside of that, it's pretty much just the same um, as any other precision base. You've got the split precision base pickup. It's got Alnico magnets in it, which are a lot warmer. Um, and more vintagey sounding than say a ceramic pickup. Um, always like Alnico pickups, so really happy to hear that and have that in the bass. And it does make a big difference. You've got a classic Fender style bridge. The tuners are slightly fluted, so they aren't um, like a really old school traditional tuner. Um, they're a little bit easier to wrap around. Um, they will start to, you know, to put the string into place for you, being that they're fluted. Um, so it's a little bit easier to. Um, restring. The nut is a bone nut. Down here on the base itself we've got the input jack, um, the tone knob and the volume knob. As I say this is a square and it uses the vibe word um, rather than being a vintage recreation and one of the places that is evident is in the neck. Um, the nut is 43 millimeters so it's a little bit bigger than a jazz bass neck um, but not as big as a traditional precision bass width the neck profile on this bass is a slim C profile and that paired with the nut width makes it very easy to get around. If you are just starting out or this is your first or second bass, um, you're not going to have a problem getting around the bass and if you like a bass with a smaller neck, again, this is going to be for you. I'd say the neck profile is very similar to a vintage jazz bass profile. Um, there's a little bit more meat down at the bottom of the neck but as you come further up towards the neck here, it really flattens and widens out. Despite saying there's a little bit more down um, by the nut, it's really not a lot and so it's still a small compact neck profile that you should be able to get around and it's not really very precision bass like. One of the most interesting things about the construction of this bass is that the body is made of NATO um, and the neck is maple. Traditionally on a 70s bass you would have a maple neck and an ash body um, and quite a lot of the 60s precision basses have a maple neck and then a order body. Um, but this is NATO. NATO is used as a replacement for mahogany and I think it has a pretty profound effect on the tone that you're going to get from this bass. For me, there's a little bit less bottom end, real low end from this body, um, and a lot more mid-range. And this instance, I'm talking about kind of the high low mids to the high mid-range. Um, and there's a lot more of that. It's really present. Um, and I think it sounds really great if you're playing um, with a pick. It really helps cut through. And it sounds really great as a, a rock bass for me. In terms of the construction overall, I think this bass is very well done. Um, the binding is really good uh, around the fretboard. I think there aren't really any, any complaints to be had. The only one tiny thing that I could find, and this is after years and years of uh, playing different really high-end basses, is that in terms of where the neck and the neck pocket meet, the neck is a tiny, tiny less 
probably a millimeter or two millimeters at the very most um, wider than the pocket but if you compare that to some of the 70s fenders I played where the neck pocket genuinely sticks out kind of a centimeter further than the neck um, you're not going to be complaining it's not going to affect the playability um, it's just if you really really wanted to be super picky um, and I mean you're comparing this 400 pound instrument it's less than 400 pounds instrument to something like a 2000 or um, you know even a thousand pound instrument I mean to save two millimeters you probably you probably be alright with that I think the bass is very well balanced um, it sits nicely on the knee no issue with neck dive particularly um, and the setup is okay I think the setup is decent I always suggest if you buy a Squire to take it to someone to get it set up properly um, and by that I mean to have the action and the neck given proper relief um, which is how much bend and curve there is in the neck um, to allow the strings to sit a little bit closer to the neck. For me I quite like this setup because it's kind of medium height but if you were just starting out learning I think most people would prefer to have it a little bit lower um, and I definitely think that could be done um, but they set these up out of the factory just so they don't buzz um, and are playable um, so they do have them a little bit higher than they necessarily should be but that's nothing that you can't fix. So I'm just going to run you through the different tones um, available from the bass uh, on its own and then I'm going to show you the different tones with some different styles, some pick style, some slap style and finger style um, in the context of some drums so you get an idea of how this bass sits in a mix. So first up this is the tone of the bass with the volume all the way up and the tone on full. <laughs> Now this is the tone on 50% and the volume on full again still. And the tone rolled all the way off. In this next section of the video you're going to hear the bass played along with some drums. I'm going to play some finger style, some slap style and some pick style. Uh, and don't forget to leave the continuity error in the comments below.
maybe that's given you an idea of how this bass sounds. I'm just going to give you my views on the bass um, and then round up. As I said at the start of this video, for me this is the best Squire that I have played. Um, I think it's really well built. I do enjoy the fact that it's got the 70s styling um, without necessarily all the 70s features. Um, and I think that in many ways this might actually be better than some of the um, fenders you're going to find from the 70s. It wasn't regarded as a great era for the bass. I'm a precision guy and I do really think this cops the precision vibe. So if you haven't got a precision bass and you want to give one a go, or if you're coming from a jazz bass, this is really quite a good place to start. As I said earlier, the neck profile is going to feel comfortable to you, um, but you definitely have that P bass sound, and the fact that it's got an Amnico pickup in it, which isn't the cheapest material and isn't a cheap choice, is a really good thing. I personally think this is a great bass if you are playing in the rock genre, uh, particularly if you play with a pick. The amount of high mid content makes this a really, really usable bass in that context. Um, and I think it would really cut through well. I think if you play slap style, there's probably not enough um, bottom end, but the precision bass isn't typically used for slap style anyway. I happen to really like that sound, but I know a lot of people don't. Um, and on sessions that I've done, I've tried to use precision bass um, sounds, and people just, you know, they don't really want it. They want that jazz bass thing. So, I mean, if you're a slap player, you're probably going to give this a bass a miss generally anyway. Um, but it's cool to have it and see how it sounds. And I think if you're a fingerstyle player, this bass does a decent job. I think the fact that it's got the NATO body does take away from the amount of low end that it produces. I'm used to order an ash, um, and there's a lot more low end in those, um, and a little bit less high mid. Uh, but this really is a cool sounding precision bass, and as soon as I plugged it in I thought, this does sound a bit different, and, and that's kind of how I worked it out. So if you've already got a precision bass, and you want something that's a little bit different, but still feels like a precision bass, and to many and in many ways sounds like a precision bass um, this might be a cool option to add as a second bass into the arsenal to round it up I'd say you can't really go wrong with a precision bass um, and if you don't already have one this isn't a bad place to start um, and you can always upgrade parts it's a really solid foundation it's well built and you know you can always make it better change pickups change out the tone controls change out the bridge um, all of it can be improved and to give you a really fine bass. So hopefully that's everything you need to know about the Squire Classic Vibe 70s Precision Bass. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, and if you haven't already, go and check out Langley Guitar Center. This bass is currently for sale on their website and in store. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. Don't forget to follow on Instagram. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you around soon.